What do you want to talk about? Just whatever? Um, probably actually take this time to talk about my new and upcoming book on seagulls. You have a book coming out on seagulls? No. Yeah. Dump ama- divers and the beachfront foragers. Really? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of SoFly. It's uh, it's the end of April again. We're recording shows back to back. This show's coming out June 1st, so it's June 1st. I hope summer's going good for you so far. Bass fishing is only three weeks away. It's rad. <laughs> uh, my name is Mitch, and we've got, of course, Gab here again. Hey, right on. And uh, Yelma. Hey, guys. And we've got uh, a really special guest on the show today. We've been trying to line up for a while now. Uh, he comes all the way from Meaford area, and he is uh, probably the he's a fly fishing legend in these necks of the woods, and a, a fantastic guide. Uh, we met him at Drift's What the Fly tying contest back in uh, was it February January? February, uh, I think. February, uh, yeah. yeah. Where he was doing a tying demonstration. We've got uh, Trip Fontaine on the show. Trip, how's it going? Very good, guys. Welcome. Uh, thank you, guys, very much. Yeah, I greatly appreciate this. Yeah, no, we're. We greatly appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Coming down from Eford, how long was the drive? Um, my fiance drives really fast, so <laughs> it was only about two hours. Two hour drive? That's not yeah. bad. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. thanks so much for coming down. Uh, it's nice to have you on the show. We're recording at Aldo's pad today. Acoustics are nice. He's got lots of booze. <laughs> I, I'm just here for the booze. I'm, uh, I'm super fitting. Acoustics, whatever. We're drinking Muskoka. Well, I'm drinking Muskoka. Same. Yeah. Gab, what are you yeah. drinking? I'm drinking a Pilsner. Old school. We're all drinking Muskoka. But Gab's got a Pilsner. I'm drinking a Kraft Lager. Yelma's drinking a... Gin and talk, gin, Tonic? I was going to say gin and docker. Gin and, gin and tonic docker. It's nice. It tastes like cucumbers. Actually. It's almost done, though. I'm about to switch. I'm right super on. pumped to try that, actually, because I'm a gin and tonic fanatic. Hell Not yeah. a drunk, but like just a fanatic. I, <laughs> I like them. Mm-hmm. Well, we can switch later. I'm going to try one, too. What are you drinking right now, Trip? Muskoka, tropical wheat. Tropical wheat. Yeah. Summer wise. Exactly. <laughs> Summer wheat. Is, right on time. It's delicious. Cool, guys. Yeah. So uh, basically, like with the show, we just talk about whatever. And the best part about it is we can edit. So we can always fuck stuff up and just delete it later. Yeah. Can we swear? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. We got the little red E on the show. So that's all good. Okay. People know what they're getting into. Uh, but first, I guess we could just talk a little bit about. Meaford, like so what like what what's your background in angling like for people that don't know wh- how did you get into it where where do you fish all that stuff it did not start in Meaford. oh no my fiance brought me there it all started on the saugeen Ooh, yeah those sexy waters yeah um 21 years ago Jeez. yeah i've been doing this for quite a while right on so how, what got you into fly fishing then advancing from your typical spin caster. Um, okay. okay. This is there's a pattern. There's a pattern yeah. that's... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it did not just happen. did not just fall in my hand. It came from the influence of already fishing to begin with. Um, my dad got me into fishing. Um, so we used to go for brook trout a lot. Yeah. And back when brook trout was plentiful, you didn't really, you know, care too much to keep the odd one. Mm-hmm. And watching the process of them being filleted, uh, sort of a gross little kid and was unique with the anatomy of them and would sort of pull apart the intestinal tract. And when you do that, you start to notice that they're not just filled with worms and lures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're filled with these <laughs> tiny little yeah. bugs. Yeah. And that opens a window of curiosity that, well, led me to this. Yeah. Um, I was fascinated with what I would find in them. And then that just snowballed. Uh, got before my... that, what were you doing? Fish and spin? Yeah. Worms, bobber. Yeah. Spins, Simple. That kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I didn't have any money at that age to go and buy fancy maps or yeah. Rapalas or Cleos. Yeah. I was digging in my mom's garden yeah. and mm-hmm. buying worms whenever I could. Yeah, exactly. My dad had the gear. 
Yeah. But it was still pretty basic. The yeah. rivers we fished were, you could hop over them, right? Yeah. yeah. Presentation was pretty key. You weren't going to go throw around a five, six, seven dollar maps or anything. So yeah. worms were the most practical a lot of the time. Totally. But then, yeah, um, my dad got me my first fly rod from a garage sale, I believe. Um, it all just yeah, it blew my mind, actually. Took a while to get into it. I got my first real good rod when I was about uh, 13 years old, Christmas of that year. Mm -hmm. Got a nice uh, seven foot six three weight nice. for trout. Yeah, because it's all uh, where I was grew up, like Clifford area. Mm -hmm. A lot of those streams are pretty small, but it was yeah, all yeah. self taught. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that rod still still did what it needed to do on a lot of the headwaters of the Saugeen for those years. Um, so from that point on, everything just changed. Uh, it was basically success story after success story. Like you, <laughs> you thought you had the world by its balls cause you were catching fish like nonstop. Right? Totally. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you just never turn back. Yeah. Um, everything just sort of clicks and you're like these fishy bugs and that's all they want. Yeah. And it just, pulls you further and further in and then I think a lot of it too was just the beauty of it um like I still today like I in my mind in my heart it, it's like poetry in motion yeah. and it it felt good it felt really good yeah. and with that feeling it like uh I think that's what captivated me a little more than just catching the fish at times it's just it's, a, it's an art form yeah, totally. And when you learn how to paint really good or play guitar really good or anything in the art world really good, you just, you're, you're sucked right in like a vacuum. Yeah, exactly. You never leave. A hundred percent. Yeah. You become addicted. Yeah. Well, like, that addiction eventually has led you to, uh, guiding. Right? Yeah. So how does that, how did that story sort of unfold? Um, by chance, uh, I was given the opportunity, uh, a buddy of mine in Walkerton, uh, brought me down to the river one day and that's where I met my boss John Volk and he basically was like want to hire you you <laughs> yeah. ever rode a boat and I was like no and he's like well you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> and then it all happened I guess yeah. yeah like I had done like private guiding before um thanks to social media like when you start finally posting pictures of what you're actually doing in your neck of the woods and for years like nobody knew that was really going on there it intrigued a lot of people to sort of uh, it piqued their interest. That was for sure. Yeah, and totally. some guys contacted me. And so from that, I sort of had like a personal experience, not to the extent in which like grindstone offered, but like I sort of had dilly dabbled with a few people already in it. Yeah. But no, like when that came along, which that river just, was this where you first guided? Saugeen. Saugeen. It was yeah. Saugeen. Okay. Yeah, everything started on the Saugeen. That river to me is like the veins in my body. Like that's like everything I, I live for the soggy and the things, my it's little precious pretty gem. Pretty amazing river. Like, I've never been uh, able to fish it, but it's, like, the one river where, like, we should totally get down to fish the soggy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, what Like what kind of fish are you... Like, I know bass, smallmouth bass are huge in the soggy. What other kind of fish are you catching down there? Like Oh, well, the trout. Yeah. The trout, I mean, <laughs> once you start to realize what's actually in there. And, you know, like, it's not not size demographic or anything it's just like that they're there yeah. and yeah. it's plentiful they're plentiful at it yeah to say the least um yeah. but i think a lot of the time too is, is actually when you live in that area and for a long time i didn't really see the need to go anywhere else because it has the diversity yeah. in which it does like you can basically in one day target everything you want and can actually do it like yeah with ease of access too, and nice so, fish too right yeah quality quality mm -hmm. fish and like mm -hmm. that's like one thing about the bass like i don't know there's something totally. to be said about the bass fishery there that maybe in the social realm doesn't really get the acknowledgement in which it deserves but man like the summer months are just Until beautiful now. with it yeah Until yeah <laughs> yeah that's like well the thing the first thing i ever saw because i'm from ottawa first thing i ever saw the soggy in 
was the new fly fisher did an episode on smallmouth bass mm-hmm. and they were like just doing the fishing like whatever you know the new fly fisher yeah. bill spicer and that guy and they were just fishing and they were catching ridiculous smallmouth bass like huge fish just drifting along the yeah. Yeah. and it, it's an interesting looking river because it looks like it's deep in a lot of stuff like really deep it is like what's the topography of it uh oh like that rubber changes like every, every like kilometer or so like it's very diverse in its layout um a lot of the upper headwaters is like all fast moving white water and then through the midsection it sort of levels out yeah. and then the gradial drop changes a bit yeah. and comes fast water and then again from paisley on it sort of slows down and it, i don't know it's just it has everything you need in such like small increments like like when we do like our main section like between walkerton and outside of paisley sort of like you have every type of water needed for all the species you want to target. And that's like amazing to have in like even just 16 kilometers. It's insane, man. Like for one river to have great small bass, then trout and and musky. musky. (laughs) Musky are crazy. Like, Oh man. So you fish musky too, like from time Mm, to time or I've done it. Yeah. It's not my forte. Um, they're, they are very, very hard. Uh, guy from Walkerton, Keith Blair, He's um, very good at it, and you see some of the stuff he's pulled out, like, it would just blow your mind, but no, it's nothing that I really dilly-dabble in. I, like, consider myself, like, a very true-to-heart trout junkie. Mm-hmm. Like, that's everything I I think about is trout. Yeah. I feel like everybody's got their fish. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just had Olivia on the show, and that episode's coming out next month, but... It, she was talking about musky like she loves musky that's her thing and she was like Muskies trout she's thing. like trout yeah you know that's cool but musky is like uh, she was like so passionate about it. you yeah. could hear it in her stories in her voice like she was passionate about musky yeah. also same with go, you and trout right also goes with the territory right yeah like like you fish for trouts there's like it's a soggy and you love the trout she's from like the Niagara River which has amazing musky so you kind of get that's and that's another thing we touched it, on though it was diversity in Ontario. Yeah. And the Saugeen sounds like one of those rivers where it's like you can just get them all. Yeah. It's almost like a microcosm of just Southern Ontario in general, you know? Because, yeah. like, we've got such a good fishery. You could drive, you could fish. I, we've heard this from everybody. Nick Groves was talking about it, too. Yeah. He's like, yeah. you go here, you fish bass. You go there, you fish musky. There, you'd steelhead yeah. trout. It's like world class, you know? Yeah. Even on the same, like, yeah, the same rivers. Like you go on the yeah. Grand, you drive to Paris, you go for bass. You it's drive nice. up, you go for trout. Yeah. You go a little deeper uh, down south you go for steelhead like. so you started guiding on the soggy though mm-hmm. what was your do you remember your first client you ever had the first time you're ever out there with a, on the actual job yeah i do yeah i can't mention names but no, yeah cool. i do i do yeah. anything cool to that <laughs> like how was that did you were you freaked out a little bit a little scared? for them it was probably a lot like a wild ass ride at canada's wonderland because <laughs> i'd only learned how to row a drift boat like couple weeks beforehand (laughs) yeah and we had got some high water and i mean some of the spots on the soggy and the rocks uh, that it's like moving through like the most amazing you know technical water and you got these guys who to say the least are worth a lot of money and um totally so like you your mind is just like in rate racing you can't like stop and think things through because you're just thinking about the safety of these people right it's yeah. like you're not even thinking about the fish you're just shit Don't what, what do i do them. next yeah like, <laughs> and so uh, i remember that yeah it was it was quite the experience. Now, did you tell them it was your first day on the job? Oh, I did. Oh, I, don't, you did? I don't bullshit when it oh, comes to that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so they like, knew, like, okay, we might yeah. go down. They're ready yeah. to swim. And I wasn't like... playing it cool either. Like, I was like, guys, like, look at my fucking hands. Right? Like, <laughs> it's not because it's minus two of it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like my terrified. anxiety's peaking <laughs> right now. Right? Like, <laughs> they're probably like, <laughs> they're probably like yeah. did you get into Just fish? Relaxing. No, we didn't. Yeah. No. That's the name and that's like something I don't bullshit about either. Like, you know. You can't control nature. No. Especially no. if you like guide for steelhead and stuff. And that's what we were going for. We were yeah, going for yeah. steelhead. Yeah. 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 Like going I mean, for trout and bass, you can you can't guarantee it. No. But you're like no. it, it might it's probably gonna happen. But like yeah. for steelhead, it's like yeah. you flip a coin and mm-hmm. like, okay, hopefully my client gets into some fish. And right? that yeah, and that's the hardest thing is that like you're always trying to fish vicariously through someone. Like the rod is in their hands at the end of the day. So you always try your best to communicate on a level in which they can and like do it themselves and be in that mind frame and motion in which you're trying to relay to them and yeah so 
at times like it, it gets emotional with that like because you always want the best success but like it's hard like even the best fishermen can't get the yeah. fish to eat yeah. if they aren't hungry right or mm-hmm. if you could, like there's those days right like there you can't is yeah fish. but then there's you come out the next day and it's like you can't even keep them off your line and it's like shit like i sent two guys home the day before you know yeah. and they didn't even get a bump and then today it's like we cleaned up right? yeah. we yeah. we hit a grand slam in the first like pool you know who so, are most of your clients like where like are they just people a lot from of ours here? are international a yeah. lot of our people come from all over yeah. Uh, it seems that our fishery is so well recognized outside of like just Ontario and Canada in itself that it blows my mind a lot of the time, like where these people are from yeah. and that they actually talk about our area and like when, you know, a group of guys sitting around having a couple of drinks and they're literally talking about Walkerton, Ontario or <laughs> it's crazy, you know, like the Big Head River in Meaford. It's a good feeling. Farmer. It is. It's, it's and it's it's such a privilege to hear that because we take it for granted a lot of the like, we do the same thing about like, you know, like, yeah. you know, Montana yeah, or West exactly, or Lapland yeah. or some crazy place, yeah. you know, Mongolia. Mongolia. But it's yeah, funny they're yeah. doing the same thing about <laughs> us, you know, that's another interesting thing about the clients that I like there's times I get in the boat and they just came from Mongolia and yeah. it's very neat to see that <laughs> like firsthand. I mean, like it's, and, but again, like that they want to be here on these rivers. They, yeah. they want to do great lake steelhead in. Yeah. Um, the reputation that that's got internationally is, is huge. Yeah. And it's something that we need to start taking serious. I mean, a hundred percent, man. We have a, a special thing going on here. Yeah. And we can't lose it because the rest of the world, they don't have what we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like through this experience with Gaiden, it's really opened my eyes on how serious and how precious this is. And the point like being we need to sustain it and mm-hmm. keep the longevity of it, keep it protected. Respect it. Exactly. Respect for sure. And, and spread that passion for it too, mm-hmm. because it's a really interesting point you hit on. Like even like even when I was growing up, I was like, God, I want to fish steelhead out west, you know? Oh, I want to go to the you know the Miramichi and do Atlantic salmon. It's like, but Great Lake steelhead are is just as unique as those. Like, there's mm-hmm. no other fish in the world that yeah. is the same as a Great Lake steelhead. Yeah, and we've got them here, you yeah. know, and tons of rivers with them. So. It, it wasn't until I fished them that I was like, oh, yeah, this is sick. Like, this is really unreal. I've never fished out west, but I was like, this is cool. Like, I yeah. could dig this. But it's nice to see other people are reciprocating it. Yeah. You know? And you're right. We do have to, like, spread that, you know? I've never been out west. And so, yeah, for me to have the privilege and luxury of doing it in my home province, Ontario, and not having to go yeah. travel to do it, that's yeah. that's special in itself, right? Like, mm-hmm. that... Yeah. We can literally drive like well for you guys how far to forty minutes an hour. There you go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, half an hour sometimes. And it's like yeah. if you're in Ontario, it's pretty much yeah, yeah. twenty five minutes because I'm a better driver than me. <laughs> <laughs> Lead foot in Ontario, wherever you live, it it seems to be within like a forty five minute hour distance, and yeah. you have it. And like for some people, you got two rivers in yeah. that. Like if in my area, like I can drive to the Saugeen and the Maitland and the Sauble oh, yeah. all in one day. So I can hit three rivers for steelhead depending on what clarity and water level it is, right? Yeah. So that's pretty serious in itself. I yeah. mean, I mean, Aldo got a f- beautiful steelhead on the yes, Humber. Yes, he did. That was a nice fish. It was so good. We're looking at him. He's you know waving. What? He's so stoked. No, we talk about nice proximity. Fish. It's... Like from my place, Young and Eglinton, yeah, forty minutes of a subway ride. You don't even need a car. You get off the yeah. get Toronto, off the, subway. the Toronto subway, and you catch yeah. a beautiful steelhead. Yeah, that is fucking insane. You know, like mm-hmm. we we need to like champion that, right? Yeah, that's so you it's can sort like of, get off yeah. the subway and <laughs> yeah. catch a steelhead. What? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> we catch the steelhead. You can hear the subway passing by. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and also, though, in Nature your in your finest. neck in your neck of the woods, can we just appreciate how awesome of a name the Big Head River is? Oh, I thought you were going to say Trip Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the Big Head River such a cool name for a river? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah it's and when good. you see it firsthand and you're on it, like, and you put that name into context, it's it's cool, too. Like, yeah. that river in itself is a very, very special little thing. Yeah. Um, the When you when I walk it, and like, I remember going there, like, the first time as a kid and my dad taking me there. 
I had already like been through magazines and stuff and you see all these like epic landscapes and stuff. When you show up to the Big Head for the first time, it's hard to believe you're in Ontario. Um, for a lot of people, I think they stand there for a second and they look at this beautiful water and then they look at all the rocks and think that they're on like the South Island of New Zealand. Yeah. It's it's something else like for a first timer to show up there, especially like in May and just take a look at like how it's all laid out because it doesn't feel like any other river in our area. Yeah. It's beautiful. And you got on the big head too, eh? I have. Yeah. 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 How long have you been fishing the big head for? Personally or like, oh, I've fished. I started fishing the big head when I was young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Especially the beaver too. The beaver is. Whew. Yeah. That's one hell of a river. Yeah. They all are, but they all have their own uniqueness. It all depends on season and species, but like the beaver, um, like the browns. Yeah. And that's like my thing. Browns are like what I want, what I need. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Those river leopards, like I fucking dream about them. I know. Oh, does all those rivers basically come from um, the Niagara Escarpment? Yes. That's that's why they're like so good, right? Yes. Yes. Because, like, we fish a lot in southern Ontario. It's a lot of, like, rock bed, like, a lot of shells. I guess the geography there, like you say, yeah. it's different. It is. It's yeah. very different. Um, and and it's it's neat, like, when you look at just distances in between what, like, the composition of the rivers are in themselves. Like, um, a lot of, like, the beaver is, is a different type of river composition. Like, it's uh, silty and woody and, like, filled of, like, you know things from land where like all the others are like these beautiful different varieties of rock and stuff and like the big head like that's the beautiful thing is the rock and the stone Mm -hmm. it's very sexy in itself like Mm -hmm. stripping down mother nature and getting to her core like that (laughs) as you see it like it's it's very unique like the bare bones of it where and the saugeen is is a lot different um saugeen a lot of like cool clay banks and um again like uh, the riparian line being very thick with cedars and nature yeah. forests yeah. right yeah and that's like one of the most beautiful things i think about like fly fishing is that it takes you into those areas like you if you're a fly fisherman i think you sort of have a little bit of a curiosity um with nature in itself and so you put yourself in those areas and you keep going further and further and you see and enjoy and embrace a lot more of the natural ambience of what's around you per se, just about like the river and the fish in itself. I think yeah. mm-hmm. we sort of like as fly fishermen stop at times and take a look around and enjoy where we are in a hole and yeah. not just unless every time you get off the Toronto subway on the Humber and then yeah. you're like, this actually isn't all that nice, actually, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the <laughs> fish, <laughs> No, and then totally. again, yeah, sometimes you got to be there just for the fish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Brown water and a lot of crowds. That's one of the things about Niagara that's like always been like, man, that's like a super unique looking river. Mm. The watercolor, like mm-hmm. the, just like <clears throat> the hills and everything. It's really rad. Like we fish like the, the, mostly the Grand, right? And the Credit. Yeah. And like there's a, bo- like those are both like the Grand or the Grand's a little different because like even when you go up near like, um, like Fergus, it reminds me a lot of upstate yeah. New York. But the credit too, like it's just like such a trout stream, you know. But we've never, fi- I've never fished out near the Big Head or the Soggy or anything like that. So it's cool to hear like what the different sort of topographies are. So what's the like the most the craziest request you got from a customer? Steelhead in the middle of July. Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from a, yeah, from a guy who just got back from like doing tarpon or something in in the south. He got on a plane and wanted steelhead no. in july okay so that's that's maybe steelhead the dumbest request but like the cra- <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah that's gray matter but like to me that's crazy how like. did you service it did you do it you're like okay yeah, yeah we did it and, and how did we pulled that? through yeah i don't know it's just some sort of spiritual thing that uh and i told like i said like i'm not a bullshitter when yeah. i get in the boat i will tell you how it is yeah. Yeah. uh given conditions and I told him like this is this is almost impractical. Right? Yeah. Like this is not a smart thing to be trying to attain right now. But the craziest, interesting, but the craziest, like, like, something that's just like out of like what you know. Like I want that. Ex- what I don't know. A lot of these people are just like straightforward. Like they just come and yeah. and a lot of the time these people they just want the experience of being out 
on the river too. Yeah. Like, um, a good time. A lot of these people come with friends, uh, that they haven't been with for a couple of years or, um, I get a lot of husband and wives and the husband is sort of wanting the wife to see a lot or like what it's about and get a feel for it. But yeah. no, I can't say I don't have any like bizarre, crazy. Okay. Um, right. when you talk to my boss and a couple of the other guides, like they could, they could sit here for a whole episode and <laughs> I tell you, <ya. laughs> <laughs> They have some experiences. Yeah. <laughs> I, myself, not yet. Not yet. You'll yet. come. You'll yeah. come. You'll get, yeah. you'll get odd ones. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to elaborate either just for the yeah, no, <laughs> security <laughs> of... of, of yeah. Yeah. How much we're allowed to ask? You don't have to answer this, but... <laughs> I can off the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely. I, now I'm very Intrigued, curious about yeah. it. Intrigued, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I have another beer? Let's get Aldo? drunk, guys. I can get it. <laughs> Let's get to open up. <laughs> I kind of want another one. Can you one get of another these? gin? Just try the gin and tonic. It is fabulous. I don't know if I want to try the gin and tonic though. I'm well, kind of it's new, bitch. Oh, I know. Well, you know, Muskoka. Like I'm a huge fan of such a little okay, so boy. Don't he's get me wrong boy, here. Muskoka. I like I like everything they do. Is amazing. Actually, wait. <laughs> one time. It's delicious, right? It's so good. What is that one? This is the coolest. Cute. Oh my god, the can is so nice. The t- I probably see. So I've got okay. You're a logger guy. You're a logger. I'm a total logger guy, and the craft logger is delicious. But this is cool too, and I do love a good gin and tonic. We were drinking Muskoka gin till like 2 a.m. last night. It's delicious. <laughs> Tying this... really ugly fly. Oh my god. Yeah, they were pretty fucked up. <laughs> no, 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 like, your fly was fine. My fly was fucked up. I was you slapping guys, it up. You guys tied flies. Wow. Okay. <laughs> slapping it up. There's right. Gabs. Oh my oh, god. Wow, Don't these, show eh? that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. What uh, the tail? The tail is crooked. Would you fish that trip? I would fish that. Yeah. What yeah. would you fish that for? I would even well, use first it for describe trout. It. And, let's and describe bass. it. Let's describe it, so because it's oh not my a very, yeah, not very visual. Guys, you can't, I'm, I'm, I'm now a new you can't commercial see. tire. Yeah, and so you wouldn't going to talk about this. You can't see what, <laughs> what very, we're looking at. Yeah. What? How would you describe this fly trip? <laughs> I had a cat when I was younger, and it used to cough up things that looked like this. The hairball. There's a fly pattern. I've a been tying flies since I'm 12 years old, guys. I'm in my 30s. No, this, and look at this. I can dig it. This is 100% fishable. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know why? Because when it's dry, yeah. it doesn't look anything like when it's wet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. 100%, right? <laughs> sure. I actually... <laughs> it's a butt ugly fly. When you guys were talking about <laughs> alcohol for a second there, yeah. uh, an experience came to mind. Mm-hmm. It was a request. Mm-hmm. And it was from a military person. And this person offered to do a night run with all military um, night vision. Uh, They wanted to do mousing at night, but be able to see it with the night vision. Okay. That's Mm -hmm. cool, though. Yes. Is it legal? Nope. No, Uh, it's not illegal. Maybe... For him to be, t- I don't know if he owned like the the night vision personally. He probably did if he was yeah, offering sure. to do it with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it makes sense. Yeah. Why not? Super I, badass. I turned it down. I just I didn't feel comfortable with it. I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like I'm not night gonna vision. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he got just, somebody else. To do that, yeah. Oh, he probably did. Yeah. Good, on did you, good on you, man. Money talks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. but that's no, uh, that's not my gig. That's a yeah. good ethics, man, to have. Because like I think someone uh, would mean, offer that, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Because it's like kind of like, cheap. Because it's kind of cheap, maybe. Because you could see things, or uh, no. It, it was just something I didn't want to do. It's pretty um, random. Like who? I that's what it is. I list like a lot of the, like liability at night, like oh, right. walking around. I mean, even though we had night vision and stuff, it's just sort of in the spots in which I would be taking someone to do that. It's yeah. It would be like an overnight thing, but I mean, it's just. I just didn't feel like it was something I wanted to do. And I told him straight up, right? Like, no, like this isn't anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I like got a decline out of the respect of just my personal opinion. I just, I mm. wouldn't do it. What right. Infrared. Cause you could like see the fish in the river, right? Okay. That's cheating. Probably. I don't right? know if infrared picks fish up. Oh, that's yeah, true. Because because cold, right? If the water's cold, the fish must be cold too. Science. So fly science. There's pro- just, props. Yeah, props. Uh, that's, that's my new. Weird. That's my new. Uh, a new chronicle. Science with Gab. Science with Gab. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Talk about fact checking. <laughs> Jesus. Well, that's a pretty weird request. Yeah. Yeah. Have you is. ever? Have you ever? Do you ever go mousing like at night? Oh yeah. 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 Um, the Beaver River. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's like a fun thing. I mean, especially if you go for bass and doing it at night, because when those warm summer months come, night fishing becomes a more practical approach for like a lot of species. But the bass, for some reason, like at night, they're they're right on. And on the soggy and just about anywhere in those months, you can just walk in somewhere and you're going to be hitting bass. We need to but, do that this summer. Yeah. I want to I want a mouse at night. But I've always say I love them and then yeah. I've never done actually done. You actually it. say it every episode. So I know, yeah. I know, but I've never mouses at night. We need to do it. We'll and do I'm it. dying. We're dying. We're going. You and me. Just you and me though. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want Aldo to come too. <laughs> <laughs> you actually want to catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just for browns. Just for browns. Uh any species like um a, a lot of it like believe it or not like there's really good resident rainbow fishing i mean oh really in oh, the, the magic word where uh like hanover area hanover. i mean some some of those fish like they linger around for quite some time i mean like mm-hmm. i i call them resident with some leniency but like mm-hmm. i mean some of those little rainbows i get into are, are good size and well, rainbows are feisty as all hell right oh yeah and during certain periods, like if you have like a river that has really nice, like large stone all along the riverbanks, tons of little mice, they forage and create little mm-hmm. dwellings amongst there. And when the high water or when the rains come, you get like a nice downpour. Yeah. All their little dwellings fill up with water and push them out and yeah. mm-hmm. shit like you can even times when you're down there fishing during the day, you see them going across. And so it's like you. It's like the most unreal hatch ever. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, with rainbows, man. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Rainbow eating mice. It would be but so the browns bad. too. We, we really need to do that. Yeah. That's all I can think about. I dream it at night. The browns, man. <laughs> you dream about browns. You dream about mice. Night what browns are sexy stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like I think a lot of time, like people underestimate what happens at night, and um, like brown trout. They're fucking nocturnal, man. Like mm-hmm. they like big browns. They hunt at night. Yeah, it's like that's like the fish that I've spent 21 years like psychoanalyzing more than myself and anything else in this existence I call life. They are brown trout, and like at night they come alive. But yeah. you got to be like at times like on your game. Yeah, it makes so much sense though. Like those fish, they're not big for no reason. They Mm-mm. they spend the day mm-hmm. under a log and mm-hmm. you know and sunbathing. In, yeah. Then they come at night. There's, there's no there's less predators and yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah, yeah, we gotta do that. So when? Let's plan right now. I don't know. Well, there's July, a reason why, the reason why July I think you're picking 15th. up is <laughs> July fifteenth. <laughs> July fifteenth. That's my birthday. Fifteenth. I try that's to like who's, anything who's for that would be like yeah. later, it's later exactly. August, early September. I think. I think it's for your birthday. <laughs> one of the best times to go for big browns is right before they start to pack on like their reproductive stuff uh, and start to forage for a lot more food for that. Yeah. Uh, that, in my opinion, is when you're going to have your least. I mean, your your most uh, successful time. Yeah doing it i said least <laughs> what time of year is that uh, like late august uh right before september months like because in our area a lot of those good brown waters they close september so you only got this short window to do mm-hmm. it but no like that's when you really want to focus in on big browns yeah. is it dave U or dave ug because there's an e at the end i never know how to pronounce that as dave a French hughes person. Mm-hmm. hughes hughes hughes, hughes. 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 Mm-hmm. okay well, that's like <laughs> I know, but like, no, but I thought it was like you, like without, like maybe some sound. No. Yeah. Yeah. no, it's like Hugh. I know, I know, but like I, I just want to know. Okay, I'm like mispronounce a name is different than pronouncing it differently. We'll let it just you know? go. We'll let it just go. Don't, don't say the stories. We'll okay, just do it live. We'll do it live. But wait, I gotta intro you. Okay. Okay. okay ready? Okay. Okay. Shut up. Here we go. Okay. Ew. Okay, Gab, it's time, I think, for uh, your new news section. Fly I'm fishing ready. new news with Gab. Gab, you want to do it? I am okay, hold on. ready. Ready? Go. Intro. Hello. This is the SoFly News with your host, Gabriel Bizo. Today, we are talking about a new book that came out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stop laughing. Sorry, I'm 
okay. new book came out like, this week. Um, it it's an old book, second edition, uh, Essential Trout from Dave Yu. Hughes. 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 Okay, Dave Hughes. You probably know about about that book, right? You probably have yes. looked at it a lot. Yes. But uh, yeah, so there's uh, second editions. Um, there's a ton of trout flies. They're, they probably don't all work. Yeah. Uh, too many. It, yeah. If you're a beginner, you look at trout fly, you're like fuck my life like what am i gonna do you get this book you get the basic you need you get what you need and it's a good uh, like even for me because like i carry a lot of camera gear so when i carry flies i don't carry like 10 different books so uh, the they view um philosophy is to be a little more minimalist and have mm -hmm. fewer patterns so he's got new ones he chucked some other ones from from his previous book so this book's coming out I, it came out last week. Oh. Yeah. Last week being... Last week being April. Yeah. Not July 1st. Because <laughs> it's June right now. Yeah. Oh, June, <laughs> June, June. Hey. I love that my favorite thing about the news section is we record podcasts in advance, so all the news is like super fucking irrelevant. Oh, yeah. It's so <laughs> irrelevant. Because it's like, oh, yeah, that was like two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> a month ago. That's okay. That's okay. I love it. Yeah. We, we need a time this is, a, this is late news go. with Gap. <laughs> so wait. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a book coming out, and it's full of the trout patterns that you need. So it's a it, that everybody needs everywhere in the world. It's a very, it's very, it's a minimalist um, yeah. trout um, selections of flies. What did you say? Manifesto. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a manifesto. But but what does that even mean though? Because it's all relative to place, right? I believe so. I That's believe what they tell so. You. But yeah, <laughs> probably there's a lot of like. There's patterns of flies that can mimic maybe a multiple okay. animal, not, not just one. So they're hybridized so, versions in which mm -hmm. look a lot or similar. And yeah, like they've mashed a bunch of them together. Yeah, so yeah. the trout could almost perceive it as a golden stone fly. But really, it's right. Yeah. Who knows what from Oregon? Yeah, 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 exactly. Dave Hughes, new book. There you go. April. Uh, today, I have something new as well for the news. A quote. I found a quote, and it's amazing. So here it goes. Hold on, hold on. Wait, you got a quote for the news? A quote. Yes, a quote. <laughs> I should <laughs> end it with the quote, quote, but I'm gonna do it mid. Okay. Because it's on my list. What's the, the context? Way. What's the context of the quote? It's just a fly fishing quote. A great fly fishing quote that I found online, and I have the author. Did it come out recently? No, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> An old we're done. We're done with the book. An move on. Ask. Let's move on. Gab's <laughs> news. The reason why it's called the news. news. Yeah, it's quick. It's quick and dirty. Okay, like. okay, okay, okay. It's called the olds. Yeah. <laughs> the olds. <laughs> the today olds for the news. <laughs> today for Gab's news segment, a quote from 1800. Okay. So I want to become a voice actor. A voice actor one day. So listen to this. Okay. Three fourth of the earth is water, and one fourth is land. It's quite clear that the good Lord intended us to spend triple the amount of time fishing as taking care of the lawn. Is that from the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> it's old as shit. <laughs> okay, and, and what and is it, that? It is, it is, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta okay. say who that's okay. from, because it's not from, it's, Chuck, it's from Chuck Clark. Okay. You know who that is? He's no. I mean, I <laughs> unfamiliar name. Yeah. So that's it. What about quote? that quote speaks and, to you? And what was the time frame? Because he spoke about doing the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. So it says there's so much water in the world okay. and so little earth. So mm. God probably wanted us to fish more than take care of oh, our lawn. Oh, I see. I see the sentiment. And oh, does see. God want you to take care of your lawn, me. though? I don't know. Is that part of religion? I don't think you so. You should never take care of your lawn. I, I, you should never. <laughs> you, should have, you should have turf because grass Astro is turf. awful <laughs> for the environment. So here's, here's why it, it got to me. It's because I, I, rent, I rent on grass all the time. Like, like people that take too much care of their grass. It's, okay. So, so it touched me. I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell my wife that. Yeah, I'm gonna tell her like fishing is more important than cutting the grass. Fuck. So well, it, yeah. is your, it is your wife now because I get well. You're getting married next yeah. weekend, but yeah, next this weekend, is tech but coming out in June. So okay. congratulations, Gab. Thanks. <laughs> that was pathetic. Oh, and anyway, very emotional. Continue. <laughs> okay. An another news. Rep your water and National Wildlife Federation partnered to counter the Asian carp threat 
which is kind of important because we are we are at risk. Like our waters are at risk. They've already found um, Asian carp in uh, Toronto Harbor. Is it a worry up in your neck of the woods? People talk about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it should. <laughs> so rad. <laughs> so no. So what they're gonna do? They they're gonna have some uh, apparel <laughs> to. To remind people to rep be, your water is yeah rep your water yeah, they're, they're gonna do kind of like States, a, right? a yeah. collections very thorough for, company yeah. yeah yeah they're gonna do a collection to um, to raise awareness for for the the invasion of, of Asian carp which yeah. are technically in the Mississippi but they've been catching them in the St Lawrence and the Great Lakes yeah so they're they're here but I don't think they're like officially here. Right. But, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> American River announced America's most endangered river, and I have the Canadian one after because I, I looked it up. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> is that uh, America? What? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Continue. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the most endangered river of Canada. That's uh, f- fuck the states. We'll go straight to Canada. <laughs> say that. No, 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 no. The the section of my news. Fuck this sections of my news. Okay. And then oh, let's, pa- okay. let's move to Canada right away. Okay. Because we're in Canada. Yep. The Pitticook River in New Brunswick, number one threat, and it is from damming. Damning. Yeah, damming. Damning! Um, damning. So yeah, number 10. Patagonia's got a new film coming out about damming. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's out like the last two years. No, no, they're pr- no, no. Damnation's one thing, but they're premiering oh, another okay. film yeah. called Blue really? Heart. Something like that. It's about dams in Europe. They're trying. Oh, to really? Dam- so yeah. they're they're gonna it's coming out. Patagonia Toronto is doing the premiere like in a couple weeks. Sorry, oh, you saw the poster. Remember, this is podcast is later, so right. So they did it in May. In May, it came out. It was, I'm sure, great. Yeah. And um, yeah, so in this river, I saw the river. Dude, the church this section of the show is just. It's it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. No, it's a mess. It's, it's, it's entertaining. I mean, I mean. Blue heart of Europe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The blue heart of Europe. That's gonna yeah. be good because damnation was pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was really. Don't good. you love like was it good? Thing they do I actually didn't dance. see it. Like, so was good. it? Yeah. What did just? What was the context with Damnation like? It was just Graffiti. Talking. Yeah? They actually just went and tagged dams? Yeah, and it was badass. It they was did, they badass. did. They, so, so they went with pulleys. Pulleys, is that a word? Like, yeah. You yeah. go down? Okay, that's the same in French. Um, and then like they painted, like, at night, uh, cracks on the dams. Yeah. Oh. Just to promote, like, mm-hmm. that, like we should like just get rid of them. It was like yeah. Banksy shit. It was, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. That is and like yeah, at night, like they yeah. were chased by like all this uh, big incognito stuff. rogue stuff. Like, yeah, made you want to be like an activist. Yeah, yeah. like and do some stuff around here. But we should don't talk do about it. that. Later. <laughs> should we? <laughs> I'm very game. We should talk about that later. Yeah, I got some plans, but this is not newsworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't and, sound um, good. <laughs> but um, so this list was from 2005 for the Can- Canadian one. Like the American one that I found was more recent. And something that I found interesting on this Canadian list, though. No, it's interesting. I'm going there. I'm going there. Sure. The Churchill River in Newfoundland, they say, might be at risk. And right now, there's a dam that's half done. Hmm? <laughs> the Churchill River in, uh, in um, Labrador. Yeah. It was it, a Salmon River, Brook Trout River. It's Labrador. It's yeah. a fucking awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. ginormous river. And then on this list, it was like threatened. But as we speak right now, there's like a half, there's a dam that's half done and they, oh. they ran out of money. So the project is stopped. How awful is that? So this is half, newsworthy, guys. There's like, just a half dam. There's like half dam built on like well, beautiful northern rivers in Canada. That's and they're like, oh, I don't know if it's worth that it. That is anymore. bullshit, though, right? Like, what are yeah. people right? doing? Yeah. Building half a dam. Mm-hmm. Put in Atlantic I'm gonna, s- I'm like, gonna change going that on? that section. It's gonna become environmental activism and rant with Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Changing your news section already? <laughs> <laughs> already after three episodes. Crazy. So yeah, hey, that's the that's the news. Oh wait, we week. gotta do a proper outro. The olds. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. This is your host of Fly Fishing News with Gab for SoFly. Gabriel Bizarrejis. Cool. Stay tight. Oh, well, that's a good. That was. That's the only reason why I do this. It's just to I feel present informed. myself. To it was something, right? Yeah. Something. <laughs> it's always whack. I think that's part of it. Oh, God. <laughs> Back to fishing talk. Hey, Trip. Yeah.
Trip, what's going on, brother? We're back. I actually just cracked this uh, Muskoka Docker, yeah. and I don't generally drink alcohol slow. Yeah. But this I want to because it tastes, I would say, effing good. Ooh, Ooh. baby. Like serious. And yeah. I'm a I'm a gin drinker. Yeah. Like gin and juice type of guy. Yeah. Oh. Bring it old school. And yeah. Like this <laughs> this is actually very, very good. Yeah. It's and I'm not bullshitting. It's, I gotta it's try like it. super refreshing. It's like like it's gin and tonic in a can, but yeah. that tastes really good. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. That you don't want to drink fast. Yeah. Because you want to enjoy it. Enjoy I'm it. halfway like, done mine. So I'm drinking kind of slow fast. down. Slow down. <laughs> Savor it. I don't have time to slow down. Should we try a new segment? Sure. <laughs> a new segment. Hey, let's throw let's... another segment into the show because I got a segment that I just thought about right now called, uh, it's called Mit- Mitchie's Fishies 5. Here we go, right? That's what I'm talking about. This is another segment we got. I'm playing music right now. You guys can't hear it, but I can't. I figured as much. Because it's not very good. Fingers are moving. Okay, so I want to just ask a couple questions to you and uh, take as long as you want to answer them. There, I guess there's really no rule to this segment because I just invented it other than I'm going to ask five questions. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, Trip, what's your favorite fish? The river leopard. Yeah, browns? Mm-hmm. What makes them your favorite? Have you ever seen one? <laughs> Never. If you could fish one place trip, where would it be? In the world. Once. Destination. Or not. The back of my mind. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Headwaters of the Saugeen. I don't. I don't yeah. need to go anywhere to satisfy my urges. It's all in the Saugeen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your best fishing story? Feel free to dig. It has not yet been experienced. Ah, good. It's still the come. Answer. That's the best answer Ooh, ever. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, good answer. I would have said something about. Oh, it was this time I caught a bass <laughs> and I almost <laughs> fell out of the boat. <laughs> Hasn't been experienced yet. How many yeah. fish did you have you ever caught on your like your on your best day? Like, what's your best day ever? Species or just yeah, just like... numbers or emotion. How did you feel? This is the day that you. Well, felt no, the, the question best. is like no. The question is how many fish did you catch? Oh, is that the question? Yeah. Oh, that was the best day. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking emotion here. I we're literally talking numbers. Number. Okay, we're like statistics. I'm like fifteen. I'm, I'm not 40. much of a numbers guy. No, like, okay. I, I don't find numbers to be satisfying. Um, but like. Uh, I don't know. I've had days where, like steelhead, I've caught eight or nine. Um, there's, and it all depends. Like swing fishing, I've had days of like five swinging flies. Um, brown trout, big browns. I had a night where I got two that were four and six, five, six pounds. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm not a numbers guy, and I never, I never push for that. Mm-hmm generally one fish satisfies me anything else is a cherry on top like it's just that's about it yeah totally i leave the rest for someone else mm-hmm. i think that's yeah that is it's wonderful yeah and yeah. you know what I, I think that philosophy makes you slow down and appreciate it more you yeah. know like you don't go like oh okay i got one brown let's go for the other one like you know, sometimes like sit down and it feels like, savage very yeah, savage. Yeah. the whole yeah. thing, your, your, your approach. Yeah. It's part of the reason people get into fly fishing to begin with, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's not about numbers. It's slowing down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Quality. Do you spay fish at all? This isn't a question either. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I use a switch rod yeah. and swing. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to spay for, like, with a switch rod for, like, bass or pike or something oh, it's, like that. It's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. Successful? It is. It's very successful. Um, and, you know, it, it's... It's something that, like, if you've done it steelheading and you've got the tug, and, like, with spay fishing for steelhead, there's that iconic saying, the tug is the drug. Yeah. It's there with bass, too. Like, the, the take is just, oh, it's, it's fun, it's right? Mm-hmm. You know? Especially smallmouth bass, they just jump straight out of the water. They do. They're very acrobatic. Kind of like rainbows. They are. Man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fish. And uh, that makes it a lot harder at times. Like, you, I get a lot of guys in the boat who don't know how to bow the rod. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And that's like a very serious thing with acrobatic fish. Is like you when they come up, you got to go down and like you. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know, I know that. It's to release the pressure, right? Like the, on the mm-hmm. line. Yeah. 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 
And yeah, it's it's a fun thing hitting them like that. Uh, and you're in, the, in the spring, like even though it's completely out of season and everything, when we're swinging for steelhead through May, it's nothing like for us to be going down through and, and actually hit like a feisty bass like through mid-May and on the spay rod, like just boom, like they're on like that cold water. They start seeing things and like it happens and the guy instantly, when they hook up, they think it's a steelhead. Yeah. Given the size of the bass and the soggy and like it would feel like one because a lot of them are they're totally. pretty big. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they aren't just your like dinky dock size mm. lake bass. Yeah. Like these these fish they forge hard and they have to in order to survive. So they get pretty hardy and big, which makes them like a great candidate for targeting on the fly because I don't really know anywhere else that river wise at least that has the size demographic of fish like the soggy. Yeah, oh, man, totally. Wow. What's your favorite thing about fly fishing, just in general? Well, that's the fifth question. That's the fifth. That's the fifth and final. Mitchie's fish. He's five. My mind is at ease. Yeah, yeah and it's just a matter of just like uh, just the peacefulness of it. Yeah. 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 So much of it's like very. It's like therapy. Um, and I think like personally, a lot of us when we we stop for a minute when we're out there and think about that statement for a second, it is an attribute into why we sort of follow through with it a lot of the time because it does slow us down it does something for us mentally that other types of fishing or styles of fishing don't really do Mm -hmm. Um, it makes us stop think assess be aware and want to understand and that in turn becomes like consciously about yourself and so yeah for me like That'd be the answer to your question. It's yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Puts totally my mind at ease. Yeah. Well, right on. That's the five. Mitchie's fishy's five. I could play the music again, but I accidentally closed my browser. That's it's fine. We can edit it's it. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit more about just like your upcoming season and all the stuff that you might have planned. You got some trips planned or what's going on? Just more guiding. Guiding. That that that's it. That's when does your guiding season like start? Saturday. This Saturday? Like the 28th, like the opener. I, yeah, I yeah. start that day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it goes to December 31st. Yeah. I'm going to ask a very superficial question. Yeah. I mean, is there any correlation between your name and the fact that you do this career? Like fishing trip? <laughs> yeah. I My, think it's just such a coincidence. But I mean, I don't believe in trip, coincidences. So. Trip is an alias. And it's something like that is sort of encouraged for me to use, given the security of my personal life. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, like actually, my my real name I believe has more of a significance to the fishing than trip itself. But trip has a good like connotation of what like guiding is, and a lot of people like that. Yeah, a lot like of people it. when they meet me for the first time, they think that's pretty rad. Yeah. Like, well, you know, like very unique. Like considering we're going out for on a trip. Yeah. With yeah. You, right? And it's like, and then they always like is like, are you a drug dealer? <laughs> 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 Come on, you're kind of a drug dealer. <laughs> you pr- you provide people yeah, finding yeah. a fish for mm-hmm. five minutes. That's yeah. true. That's yeah, like uh, a pretty good acid trip. Yeah. Yeah, My serotonin is. levels are through the roof right now. Yeah, it, yeah. it does. It, it your endorphins are just like raging, like pumping. Yeah, like. yeah. I'm always looking back at Aldo. Is that good? <laughs> is that funny? It's comfy. Aldo? It's <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're not. You know what? I'm not going to ask you your real name because you know what? I I, I don't want to know it. I love trip. We well, no. said it was more about fishing, so it's probably something like trout, trout fontaine. Yeah, right? trout fontaine. Yeah, <laughs> brown. No, brown. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Your season goes all the way to December thirty first, so you're like just like so. You, do you have like people booked for trout opener and all that jazz? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. we got lots of people for bass too, which is like very fun, um, and that's like another thing because. A lot of people in this area, they, they neglect the bass. There's no love for the bass. And yeah, I mm-hmm. never understood. Like, because I grew up on the Saugeen and they were always there. And out of respect for trout, you, you know, you buy your time in the season to do for something else and experience the same satisfaction. So you go for bass and it's like, shit, like once you've done it, you sort of anticipate for it like you sort of are like oh yeah i've been doing trout for the past like two months now like i can't wait to start to get into the bass mm-hmm. and yeah like uh my summer months usually become like a lot of the more fun stuff because everyone likes being in the warm weather out in speedos fishing for bass <laughs> totally man i'm so Do you stoked get for clients in speedos 
Not yet. Okay. Speedos no. and night vision goggles. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Weird scene. <laughs> Bass season is like one of the things I'm super stoked about yeah. every year. Yeah. yeah. Mitch and I share that quality. Well, we all like grow up fishing bass, you know? Yeah. It's like the mm-hmm. same thing. Like, we don't know why it's not as popular. Everybody's like stoked on trout. It makes mm-hmm. sense. Trout's great, you know? Mm-hmm. But bass, it's like, yeah. Like mm-hmm. Smallies, largemouth, you know? Everything's but fun. That's only a small dismo window in the whole guide and thing. It's, like, it's, it's changing, though. No? I think mm-hmm. people are catching up. Like, here, like, you talk with Rob and Chris and Aldo. We all love, like, the bass. And but I think carp, it, I'm speaking in terms of, like, guiding right like i'm yeah, not, exactly. not personal like i i like going out there with like the guys and doing this visual top water stuff and the excitement in which invokes upon them because like as when you when you cast that popper out there and you're just like plugging slowly in and then all of a sudden the chase is on and they're fucking sucking they're like yeah. it's like a toilet flush and pulling mm-hmm. like, something right into its mouth and the guy like giggles like a 13 year old girl right like <laughs> it's it's awesome seeing that reaction and then that really piques my enjoyment of of fishing when when you get that type of reaction to someone who hasn't had that experience personally and mm-hmm. you're giving that to them yeah it's super fun. So bass, like as a guide, is just. It must be a really fun. It is fish to guide. You know? It is. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting visually it's and yeah. like like just how they're acrobatic and stuff. But you know, at some times they can be fucking stubborn. They're like mules at times. Like hmm. given the environmental situation, like there's days that you go out there and you come across like pods of like 30, 40 of them sitting there and all these bass, you know, they're like, they're good sized bass. They stick out like sore thumbs in the water at this time of year. It's gin clear, come around the bend and there's just this pod of them sitting there. And there's just days you can't even fucking get one of them to move. But like you try and you try and try. But and even that experience in itself for a lot of people is, is very intriguing and, and fun and satisfying too. Like watching that and having that experience. And then they get this, understanding like biologically with the, the science and nature of it all it's like these are living creatures and you can't just fucking throw mm-hmm. whatever you have in your bag at them and expect them to latch on that they that they have choice and preference and right now they don't want to eat and then they get this respect where it's like you can't as man just conquer and, mm-hmm. and like control mm-hmm. and it's like very and you see that on a lot of guys faces too at times like Mm -hmm. they just sort of like okay like no i'm not gonna get it and they have to deal with that Mm -hmm. and that's something that changes you as a person when you have to succumb to that type of mind frame where it's like i can't control the situation i can't get this fish let's move on yeah yeah, exactly. You get that a lot with the Atlantic salmon too, oh, like I on the, in the, in yeah. Quebec and stuff. Yeah. Like those rivers are super clear, and when they're in the pool, like you see them, they're like mm-hmm. all the way from oh, yeah. twenty feet down, and then you cast your fly, and they don't take. And it's like you just said, you know, that you realize that you're not really the dominant, no, yeah. <laughs> the, the dominant yeah. uh, uh, person here. Like uh, mm-hmm. you can throw whatever you want at them; they just look at it. Mm-hmm. You're like, no, yeah. not that one. No. So with bass, it's the same. You know, yeah. like people say, ah, oh, bass are easy now. Nah. You know, what mm-hmm. they, if you go all the time, you're going to have days that yeah. they're stubborn, like you just said. And you learn to move on. And you go mm-hmm. to the next pool, and you just you start all over again. You, you work it. You work your ass off. <laughs> yeah, totally. So as a guide in your neck of the woods, how do you anticipate approaching trout opener? You got, you got your client on the boat. What do you do? What do I do? First day of trout season, oh, what's the plan? We're swinging. Yeah. We always start swinging, like I, you know, like into Canaan and Nymphen, you know, is it's a thing. There's people like actually to stop for a second, like we do both. We do what it takes yeah. given the type of water we're fishing. So we know what we need to do in that location. But a lot of the time, we want the swing. We want that tug because if you've done it and you felt it you get addicted to that feeling like it's zero to a hundred mentally and like the feel of it like nothing is more satisfying than a steelhead slamming your swing and so your choices to these clients are a little different than what you would do if you were like you know introducing um your friends to the game because it's a business you're trying to hook these guys you're trying to make sure that these guys have a good experience Mm -hmm. so i totally understand that but a lot of these people are educated people on the subject they and then they want that too like a lot of the clients show up there with an 11 foot six switch rod or a full space setup and they're like i want it on the swing Mm. and so 
you do what they want, right? Even though you know, like, well, the odds, like, you you will you will sort of explain to them, given the scenario, like, no, like, here, we're going to do this. And they, they follow suit, but they want what they want, so you try and give them that experience, right? Because yeah. they're the yeah. customer at the end of the day. Yeah. You don't say, like, mm-hmm. no, like, we're not swinging. Sorry, it's not going to work. It's like you put them in the position that has the best odds of success. Yeah. yeah. But, Absolutely. like... At this time of year, the water temperatures have increased. The fish are a little more feisty. Some of them are dropbacks because they've done their thing, so they want to pack on calories to get back to the lake. So all of a sudden, for me, like a swinging is sort of like the go-to. And and personally, like when you're fishing a river like the Saugeen, it's, it's not it's not small water. It's very hard and time-consuming to practically fish a lot of given locations indicating. And when, when you can take like a setup. And swing your fly through and work it very thoroughly. I believe personally, your chances of success increase a lot greater. And when you have someone paying for a service that goes without saying, you just you sort of try to um, practically do what you need to in in large like So yeah. covering water is a serious thing when it comes to steelhead, and you want to be able to cover that water as thoroughly as possible. Yeah. There's times like when we'll show up to a pool and we will indicate it first subtly, you know, send a couple little nymphs or a yarny through just to see if anything is going to hit the delicate mm-hmm. finesse. But then, boom, it's to the big guns. And a lot of the time, like our success is always off of swinging those flies. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, it's, it's all about covering water because yeah. some of these pools at this time of year, when you're on a large body of water, they contain a lot of fish. So you're not just sort of targeting one, two, or three. You're targeting, you know, like eight or so. And generally, if you can work it good enough, one of those eight is going to fall for it. And yeah. You present it well enough, and it's on. So yeah. And they're spread out, too, right? It's not like they're all just in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like if you ever watch Steelhead in clear water at this time of year, like, the they're very weird spots they sit. And a lot of the time, like, they're not where you expect them to be. And so sometimes in order to fish that water, you do got to swing it. Yeah. And it's all about how enticing you can make that fly. And yeah. So that's generally what yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it makes sense. If there's anything you could, I guess, you know, leave with in terms of speaking to the state of just fishing in Ontario, like what is it? What? Because we talk a lot about like people aren't jazzed up about bass or like people don't realize great like steelhead should be what they are, you know, like. What would be some parting words to get people inspired and thinking the way we should be thinking? Um, that's, a, that's an intense question. But for me, like, I think it's in, enjoy your home waters and embrace it and protect them. Um, get to know where you are as a fisherman, figure it out, and keep it safe and protected so other people can enjoy it. Because, you know, we're not all trout fishermen. We're not all bass fishermen. And, you know, if you, you don't like the bass in your water in some section and neglect to keep them safe, well, there goes someone's enjoyment from yep. other location. But, like, enjoy what you got because all these water systems here, they have fish. Yeah. And learn to use it. And fly fishing, you can do that because as soon as you understand fish, it's biology and their feeding habits, like, they eat insects. And I mean, with fly fishing, it's not only insects, there's streamer patterns and like you can get pretty intricate when it comes to tying on the vice and being able to replicate what it is you need to do to attain those fish. And, And that's like a big thing in itself is being creative to the point of actually being capable of getting what you want. Uh, a lot of tackle terminal people like they don't have the choice like they go in and they look at all these varietals of lures and stuff and it's mm-hmm. pretty much like the same like over and over shit just yeah. different packaging but like with the vice like you can you are the creator and you can come up with whatever it takes need be to get what you want and that's that's another serious thing about fly fishing that makes it so majestic and beautiful and like very personal is that you have that ability to do that be an artist and then attain this beautiful thing from nature so like use your water understand it figure it out and enjoy it yeah that's it like totally trip thanks so much for coming on today man no it's more than more than a privilege for me but like we also have to do this again because like 
we're going to get you guys out on the boat. And if we can possibly do like a live recording from the boats with you guys, uh, get you on the Saugeen um, out there in the middle of butt fuck nowhere with yes. rods in your hands and doing this type of stuff. Like yeah, that's, totally. that's what we want. I talked to my boss, John, and he's all for it. Like, right on. So love you, John. We, uh, John, I love you too. <laughs> yes. We have the ability to do that. It's rad. Yeah, yeah. We are all a hundred percent down. Looking at Aldo. Thumbs up. Yeah. All of them. Of course, says, man. And then always a, game. Again, like Meaford, the big head. I can I'd love to be able to take you guys out and just show you a glimpse of what it is that's really here for you guys to enjoy because yeah. you, you set know. up your own you set up your home waters uh, in a way that sounds incredible especially people that are un, a little unfamiliar with them, they sound amazing. And uh, 100%, that'd be sick if we could do that. So the last time we went for some drinks, <clears throat> not recording, and then we have a chat. And then since then, I've been trying to convince Chantal to move around the area. Uh, and I've actually never room. even been. <laughs> a lot more room and I'm like, than here. You already sold me on it. I'm like... You know what? Let's let's. It's just like a, a couple hours away from Toronto. Let's just move there. We're moving out to your end of yeah. the woods, Trip. Uh, Trip, you're yeah. on Instagram, right? I am. What's your handle? You want people to follow you? Trip underscore Fontaine. There you go. And we're on Instagram too at the SoFly Crew. Go ahead. You can see pictures from the show, pictures from us on the rivers, all that stuff, and just what we're doing. Check out Trip. Uh, and um, yeah, man, thanks so much again for coming on. It was really, really good. Thank you. That's it for me, Mitch Gam. Hey, see you back in uh, August. It's June. It's June. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was no July first. No, this is coming out June first. You, s- Gab. Yoma. Okay, uh, guys, great. Uh, see, see you next time. All right, peace. <laughs>